Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I've got my year-end wrap-up of the best of 2022 in makeup. I did my best of 2022 skincare and anti-aging video already last week, so if you didn't check that one out, I'll link it right up here for you. This one is gonna be about all things makeup, all the great new products that I discovered this year and that have become new holy grails, new loves. So if you haven't tried some of them yet and you are a mature woman, then um, these could be things that you could try and that perhaps would work for you. Because of course, I am a mature woman and I know a lot of people go away from makeup when they get older because they feel like, ugh, their skin, it just doesn't play right. And it does take a ton of trial and error to find the good makeup that's gonna play right on your skin. All right, so I've got a ton of stuff to go over here. So let's dive right in. This is gonna be a combination of drugstore and higher end makeup. I don't do super high end, but some of this stuff is a little bit more spendy, but I'll try to balance it out with recommendations from the drugstore. Let's get started in the thing that I think is probably one of the hardest things to find for mature skin, and that is foundation. So I found a new Holy Grail foundation this year. I was so excited when I tried this because it's the first foundation that I've ever tried that made me feel like my skin looked flawless. I mean, and how often can you say that about, you know, your 60 or over 50 or over 40 year old skin? And that's what this foundation made me feel like. So it is the Dior Forever Matte Foundation. Now this is the perfect foundation for me because it's really easy to apply. You don't have to mess around with lots of other products with it. It is spendy at $54 for an ounce of foundation, but it comes in 43 shades. And I feel like it reduces my makeup budget overall because I don't need to use primer with it and I don't need to use setting spray with it. This is a medium coverage foundation. You can wear it sheer. It is buildable up to more coverage, but I just think the coverage on this is so good. The day I tested it was on one of the hottest days in August and I had like a big zit and one sheer coat of this just covered that sucker up. Like it's so pigmented, but it's still so lightweight and beautiful on the skin that it looks really, really natural. I don't feel like I'm wearing a heavy cakey face of makeup. You know, no one wants to look like cake face when they have makeup on. And this just looks so beautiful and so natural looking on the skin, but yet it covers everything that I want it to cover. I have enlarged pores due to a lot of sun damage. This makes my pores look like half their size. So when I wear this, I don't feel like I am a walking orange or golf ball, right? Because that's what my pores make me feel like sometimes with other foundations. So this is so beautiful. It wears for 10 hours flawlessly. It doesn't wear off anywhere. Didn't settle in a single wrinkle on my face. I feel like a million bucks when I wear this and I can't say that for any other foundation that I've tried. I apply this with my BK 101 brush. This is my favorite foundation brush hands down of all time. It puts on foundation so beautifully. I mean, this also goes on great with a sponge, but I really like it with the brush. It just gives me like that perfect flawless skin look, that perfect finish, no streak marks. If you wanna try the BK Beauty brushes, I have a discount code with them. It's ongoing, is Angie10 for 10% off. Links for all the products will be in the info box below the video for quick and easy shopping. And then the drugstore foundation that I tried this year that I like the best was the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk Foundation. This is vegan, cruelty-free, fragrance-free, SD alcohol, free. So if you're looking for all those things in a drugstore price foundation, this is a really good one. It gives sheer to medium coverage. It looks beautiful on the skin, really natural looking. I have to say on me, it did get a little bit shiny through my T-zone by the end of the day. So I did have to powder it. And if you have dry skin, this could really work very well for you because it felt really hydrating to wear all day. It felt really comfortable to wear all day. It looked really skin-like and it had very little settling into wrinkles. My all-time favorite drugstore foundation is L'Oreal True Match Nude. That's a really good one if you're looking for a great foundation from the drugstore. All right, let's switch from foundations into tinted moisturizers. I know a lot of more mature women love a tinted moisturizer for just their everyday foundation. They don't wanna fuss with a foundation anymore. I like tinted moisturizers for my like no makeup makeup days because I like my skin tone to be evened out a little bit. I do like to put on a little bit of a something. Sometimes I just use my tinted sunscreen for that, but sometimes my sunscreen just isn't enough 
coverage for me. So this year I tried 12 tinted moisturizers. I did two separate videos just on trying tinted moisturizers. My favorite one for this year is the Say Slip Tint. This is so beautiful on the skin. I don't know what it is about this one. It's got like some kind of a magical way of reflecting light. Every time I wore this, I don't know, I just feel like my skin looks so good, but it looks so natural. The finish on it is really super shiny and I'm not a person who's big into shine, but I just set my T-zone and then I leave the rest glowy and it just looks so beautiful. It wears all day with hardly any um, wearing off and with very little settling into the wrinkles. I love this one so much. It also has an SPF 35 in it from zinc oxide. So it's a nice mineral sunscreen. You can use it to touch up your sunscreen at the end of the day. It applies really easily with fingers, brush, sponge. Every time I wear this, I feel like my skin just looks so healthy and so youthful. Then tied for top spot of all the tinted foundations that I tried this year is the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. This is really beautiful as well. And the price point on these two is about the same. This one looks more expensive because it's $35, but it's for 1.35 ounces, I think. And this one is like $29 for one ounce. So if you break it down to ounce for ounce, this one is actually less expensive than the Tarte. The finish on this is very similar to the Say. It's got a very dewy finish. So for me, I always have to powder it. It gives sheer to medium coverage. It never looks heavy or cakey on the skin. It always just looks so sheer and so natural. I just love it. My favorite this year from the drugstore is the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Balm. I wear this on days when I'm doing like, you know, a more no makeup look. On the skin, this looks very natural, very skin-like, never heavy or cakey. It wore really well throughout an eight hour day. It only wore off a little bit on my nose. It did get a little shiny in my T-zone later in the day, so it could use a touch up of powder if you have a slightly oily skin like me, but if you have dry skin, I feel like this is a really hydrating formula that really looks great and really wears well. I put it on with my BK106 brush and I just dip it in and then rub it around my face and it makes it so quick and easy to apply. All right, let's move on to under eye concealer. Is this a hard thing to find once you get to be a mature woman? <laughs> my gosh, so hard to find a good concealer. My holy grail last year was Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear. This was probably still my most worn concealer of the year. It is still holy grail for me. I absolutely love it. It's very lightweight. It's very comfortable. It doesn't settle in your wrinkles and it doesn't dry out your skin. So that is a really good one. But I did find a concealer that I think I liked a little bit better than that this year, but I didn't use it as often as I use the L'Oreal. And I think it's because you really have to be careful using this other one that you don't apply too much because it can just go bad so quickly if you apply too much. So the concealer that I'm talking about that is one of my new holy grails is from Derma Blend. This is their Cover Care Full Coverage Concealer. Now being a full coverage concealer, it is highly, highly pigmented, which is why you hardly need any to cover whatever you need to cover under your eyes. But this is such a beautiful concealer if you apply the right amount. Like it has a big oversized applicator like so many things do now, like that's a whopper, check it out. But what I do is I scrape off most of the concealer into the cap so I have hardly anything on here and then I literally just like doop, do the tiniest dot right there. And then blending it out with my A506, my kitten paw brush, I get the most smooth, most beautiful coverage, most flawless looking under eyes. My skin is far from flawless, especially under my eyes. But this just makes it so even and so perfect and so smooth. It didn't settle in my wrinkles and it didn't feel drying by the end of the day and didn't make my under eyes look like the desert. It's just hands down the most beautiful concealer I think I've ever used. <laughs> so <laughs> give that one a try, but remember, only use the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of it. My A506 concealer brush has been out of stock for like a month now and it just came back in stock. I'm so happy to let you guys know. So if you had wanted an extra one of these or if you had never purchased this yet, then this is definitely the brush 
to try for your concealer. If you're struggling with your concealer because you're older and your skin just won't cooperate, give this brush a try. I did try a bunch of drugstore concealers this year. I didn't really like any of them, unfortunately. So I guess my favorite drugstore concealer is the Maybelline Age Rewind if you're looking for a drugstore concealer. All right, let's talk setting powder next. My favorite setting powders for the last ooh, five, seven years were the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores setting powder or the Honest Beauty Invisible Blurring Loose Powder. Well, I discovered a new one this year and I have not used either of those two since then. This is the NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder. I love it because it does come in shades, so it's not just a white translucent powder. You know, I still do love the IT powder, but it's a white translucent powder and it does give flashback if you are taking a picture in a darkened room with a flash and you know, nobody wants that. Because this is tinted, you get no flashback from it. So I have had a flashback free year since I discovered this. But you know, that is something that you have to worry about only occasionally, right? You want a setting powder that performs perfectly every single day, day in and day out. And I know a lot of mature people don't like using setting powder at all, but I personally love setting powder because I feel like it's the thing that helps to disguise my pores and disguise any eye bags that I have. When I put on the setting powder, those pores disappear. It's not drying, it's not heavy or cakey. You just apply the teeniest, tiniest amount of it. I usually use my BK 108 brush. I just pick up a little bit of the powder, tap it off so that you don't have a ton on your brush, and then just press it lightly. And I feel like it keeps my makeup looking so flawless all day long. So that is a really great discovery this year. So glad I found it. All right, let's do eyeshadow next. I feel like eyeshadow is one of the places where we can have the most fun with our makeup. I found a couple of palettes that I really love this year, and also a couple of new kinds of eyeshadow sticks that I really loved this year. So it was a good, good year for eyeshadow. One eyeshadow palette that I tried that I just fell head over heels for is like the most basic eyeshadow. It's the one that I use today, and it's the one that I probably reach for the most on a daily basis because the shades in here are just so perfect, so neutral. They, you know, you can make you look go with everything. And it's so tiny and compact. And I just love this little bento stack. This is the Kaja Bento Stack in Neutral Moment. It has three shades of eyeshadow and this stack is all matte. So there's your lightest shade matte for the lid. Right here is your mid-tone matte for doing your crease defining. If you have hooded eyes, that really helps to make that hood recede. And then your third shade is your darker tone matte. It's not super dark, but it's dark enough that you can get a little dry going at the outer corner. I love the three shades in here. These shadows are so easy to work with. They're pigmented, but they're not overly like sticky or grippy. So you can really blend them out really well. I never have any problems with blending these. And I think, like I said, these are great for beginners. The other eyeshadow that I recommend for beginners are going to be the eyeshadow sticks. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with like the Bobbi Brown and the Laura Mercier. Those are cult favorites and cult classics. I tried two other brands of eyeshadow sticks this year. First one is the It Cosmetics Superhero No Tug Shadow Sticks. And the second one is from e.l.f. These are their No Smudge Shadow Sticks. And these are both fantastic. I love them. I have three of the e.l.f. They come in shimmers and mattes, and the price point on these is, of course, fantastic. And I have two of the It Cosmetics. I can't find my second one, though. I'll find it, I'm sure, five minutes after I finish recording this. But the shades on these are so nice, and it's so easy to just do, like, a quick summertime look. And I gotta say, these two e.l.f. shadows, these are the ones that I use probably most of the summer, you know, when you just want to not be a slave to your makeup, you want to do really super casual. I would just like to zoop, zoop on the eyelid, a little bit this in the outer corner. I would use this as my under eye liner and it would last all day. And the same with the It Cosmetics ones. They last all day. They didn't irritate my eyelids. They didn't, you know, travel around or anything. They really, really stay put. And I like these the best. The three over here are the e.l.f. shadows. So this is the matte one that I have. And this is like a pinky shimmer. This one is more like a purpley shimmer. And this is the It Cosmetics one. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, so pretty. One of the palettes that I really liked a lot this year was this Natasha Denona Mini Glam palette. This one is so pretty and the shades in this were so gorgeous for like a summer 
or fall look. It's like just the perfect little bite-sized thing to take with you when you travel or if you're not that into a big palette. It's just a really great small palette. It's got three shimmers and two mattes. If you're looking for something drugstore, this Rimmel Magnifies Nude Edition palette is beautiful. And again, this is a great one for people who are just starting with eyeshadow because while there are a ton of shades in here to choose from, and this end it does look like they get fairly dark, most of it is pretty light and pretty neutral. Like all the way up to here, pretty light, pretty neutral, giving you a lot of shades to choose from, a lot of ways to play and figure out what you like, whether you like warmer shades or whether you like cooler shades, because there's both in here. And there's enough mattes and enough shimmers in each to enable you to do a complete eye look. They're not super pigmented. They're actually a little bit transparent, translucent, so they give you just the most beautiful little wash of color on your eyelids that looks so nice, but it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look really super dramatic. So it's a really great beginner palette for someone who wants to dabble in a little bit more eyeshadow, but doesn't really want like a super dramatic look. The least expensive palette that I have to show you is this little guy from Sephora. This is a limited edition holiday palette, but it was sold out and I thought that was it forever and I just looked and it's back in stock. So this is one of the most beautiful palettes I found during the year. It's got a nice cardboard uh, cover here but it does include a mirror and it just has eight pans of color. It's five mattes, three shimmers and it gives all the perfect shades that you need if you wanna do a neutral to cool eyeshadow look. And for me, this is the closest thing that I've seen to like a perfect palette because usually it's lacking a good mid-tone matte to do your crease or it's lacking a really pale matte to do your eyelid. This has both for a change so it's a really beautiful pale matte over here. It gives you two choices for your crease color so there's a warmer tone here and a cooler tone here and neither of them are super dark but then if you want to smoke it out it gives you a nice brown for like an everyday look and then a super intense black that you you can use to really smoke it out. Then the three shimmers are gorgeous. There's a lighter one here, a pink one here, and then a really beautiful darker like gunmetal gray. So there are the three shades. They're just so pretty. I just love this palette so much. And the everyday price on this is $8. So you can't go wrong with this palette. Then another palette that I tried this year that I really kind of fell hard for was this MAC Art Library palette in Nude Model. This one has the most gorgeous shades and I was so happy to see a MAC palette because MAC used to be my all time, hands down favorite eyeshadows. And then I kind of got away from MAC for a few years. I felt like they weren't coming out with uh, the kind of palettes that I could relate to or that I liked or that I really understood the colorways in them. And this one just grabbed me the second I saw it again the perfect amount of mattes and shimmers. It gives you that super light matte for your eyelid. It gives you a choice of four mid-tone mattes for doing your crease so you can switch it up. And then a couple of darker shades here and some really beautiful shimmers. Let me show you these shimmers, this one. Oh, beautiful. I, I just love the shimmers. If you guys are older and you're not playing with shimmer eyeshadow, I would encourage you to you know rediscover them. I know a lot of times people say, oh no, you're too old to wear shimmer on your eyes. I mean, I wear shimmer every day. I love it. I just feel like it just is, you know, brings a little extra light and life and helps my eyes look a little bit more open and makes me look a little less tired when it's reflecting more light out of there. So I don't think any makeup should be off limits to us just because of our age. So I like everything. I feel like makeup's fun and we should all be able to play with it. So anyway, here are the three gorgeous shimmers on that one. Aren't they just beautiful? So that gives you a lot of choices for eyeshadow this year but of course probably the palette that I use the most is my favorite from last year and I think it was also my favorite from the year before so I'll just talk about it briefly the Colourpop Stone Cold Fox palette the most beautiful palette on the planet and almost made just for me. I just love this palette so much. This is always one of my all-time faves. And of course, to put on all that eyeshadow, you're gonna need some brushes. So why not go with the brushes that were developed by a mature woman for mature women so that they work great on your skin. So this is my set of eyeshadow brushes. If you wanna get the set, it comes with the concealer brush and my blush brush, but it's a set of five brushes that help you do everything you need to do with your eyeshadow from beginner to expert, you will be set 
with this set. You can also buy them individually for just a starter brush. I definitely recommend the A502. This is my crease blending brush and it is so perfect, the perfect size to fit right in your crease and really help to disguise that hood. But they're all really great and I hope that you'll give them a try. And I hope that if you do, that you love them as much as I do. All right, you guys, let's move on to eyeliner. The eyeliner that I was most excited about finding this year and that you guys were most excited about too was a winged eyeliner stamp. And I featured this in a couple of videos and you guys went crazy for these. I had no idea you guys were so into doing winged eyeliner and I am so happy about it. These are called the Flick Stick and you get two because there's one for your right eye and one for your left eye. And it's just a little stamp so that you can do a perfect winged eyeliner. And as you know, as you get older, uh, doing your eyeliner is one of the hardest things. You can't see as well. You got your mirror jammed up way close to your face. You can't even fit your hand in there. Your eyes jumping around, your hands jumping around. So on one end, it's just got a little stamper. It almost looks like a tiny little bird foot. So all you do is you take this stamper, you line it up with the outer corner of your eye and you just stamp your little wing on there. And then all you have to do is connect that across. The other end has eyeliner that you can connect it across with. I don't love these. They are a little bit chunky for me. If I was gonna do a liquid liner, I would definitely use, um, where is it? It's this one from Maybelline. It's called their Hyper Easy. This is the best liquid liner for mature women because it's so fine and tiny that you can really get a really small line. And this is great if I'm doing a wet line, but again, it's really hard for me to get a wet line to <laughs> go where I want it to. It's all over the place, generally speaking. So instead of doing a wet liner to connect my wing, what I've been doing this year is using a black eyeliner pencil. So the one that I've been using for that is this one from Item Beauty. It's called Lucky Line. It is a wooden pencil and so you sharpen it. And what I like about this one is it's not super creamy so I can control my line. And with this, it makes it so easy to um, get my eyeliner on there, have it look good, have it not be like choo, 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 all over the place up there. Um, and this is awesome for connecting that line. So I love this one. You can use it in your waterline. Moving on to the uh, waterline liner for the top that I'm using today. This is one that I discovered and really, really love. It's the Cali Ray Surf Proof Easy Glider Eye Definer. This one is in the color The Deep. And this is a beautiful, gorgeous, dark, blue green there it is a stunning color and this one is really creamy so you can apply it in the wet line and it's not hard to get it it just like glides right on it lasts in the water line all day until you take it off but it's also fairly easy to remove so i love it and then the other eyeliner that i discovered this year that i really love for that wet line upper wet line as well is from persona cosmetics this is their 24 hour waterproof eye pencil. Comes in four different shades, black, brown, plum, and copper. I like the black and the brown the best. This one also is a super creamy liner. It's just so easy to do your upper water line with this. I absolutely love it. Stays in place all day, doesn't transfer to your lower water line. These two are neck and neck for me. For my lower water line today, I am using the Fenty Fly Pencil Longwear Pencil Eyeliner, and this one is in in Moon Dunes. This one is a mechanical pencil and it goes on so nicely in the lower waterline. I just love it. All right, let's talk mascara next. I found a new Holy Grail mascara this year. It's also from Cali Ray. This is their Come Hell or High Water mascara. It's a tubing mascara and I love it. I have never met a tubing mascara that I liked before. I like how they look and I like how they work, but I hate it when I remove them because instead of dissolving, they break up into little bits and the little bits always cling to my skin and I find them all over my face like the next day. <laughs> I can't stand it. They never rinse away cleanly. But this is the first tubing mascara that I've met that actually rinses away cleanly and doesn't leave little polka dots all over my face. So it's really easy to remove, which is very important with mascara, but it's also super beautiful on the eyelashes. I like smooth, silky, beautiful lashes. I like it to give me more volume, more length, make my lashes look way better than they actually are. 
And that's what this does for me every single day, and I absolutely love it. So new holy grail there. For a non-tubing mascara, I tried the Bambi Oversized Eyes from L'Oreal. This is a really good one, makes beautiful looking lashes. I really like L'Oreal's mascaras. I think they probably make the best mascaras at the drugstore. This one isn't my favorite though. My all-time favorite from L'Oreal is their Unlimited Mascara, big favorite. For me, this is better than the Bambi Eyes. Um, partly because it has this little <laughs> tricky applicator. Seems like it's just like a little gimmick, but oh my gosh, if that thing bending doesn't actually help me get my mascara on without, you know, poking myself in the eye with the wand or getting mascara all over my beautiful eyeshadow that I've just, just done, it really helps me control where I'm putting the mascara to have it bent like that. Who knew, but it does. So that's my favorite drugstore mascara. And my previous favorite mascara I do still love. It's the Lancome E-Dole Mascara. That one's also fantastic. I've got three lipsticks to show you here today. I think I wore them the most and love them the most out of all the other lippies that I tried this year. The first one is from Revlon. It is their super lustrous lipstick, so drugstore product. And the shade that was the most worn this year is this shade, Bear It All. I'm wearing it today. This is the most beautiful lipstick, creamy and beautiful on the lips. It's not completely matte, so it doesn't make your lips look dry and extra cracked and extra wrinkly, but it also doesn't run up into my lip wrinkles. It stays in place really, really well. Then the next traditional lipstick that was a huge um, fave of mine this year was this MAC lipstick in Modesty. And it was a big year for me and nude lipsticks. I just love the nudes this year. So this MAC lipstick is gorgeous. Doesn't run up into my lip lines, doesn't dry out my lips. Just comparing these two, the MAC is definitely more pigmented and more opaque than the Revlon. The Revlon is a tiny bit sheer. And then the last one is from Fenty. I just discovered this one recently. It's their Slip Shine Lipstick in Goji Gang. And this is a beautiful lipstick. This one is gonna be more emollient, definitely much more hydrating feeling than the other two. Those two are not drying, but you know, it's the dead of winter now. And so if you're looking for something really hydrating to put on, it's got so many oils in it and it feels so good, but yet it just slips on your lips. It gives you enough color but it doesn't feel like goopy or greasy or anything. It's just so gorgeous. So let me show you the swatches. This is the Revlon in Bear It All. This is the MAC in Modesty. And this is the Fenty in Goji Gang. And then for long wearing liquid lipsticks, I've got two to share with you today. The first one I discovered in the year was the Revlon Colorstay Satin Ink. This is in the shade Partner in Crime. I wore it so much this year. I feel like every time I was making a video and I knew I was gonna be talking for a long time and I wanted something that was really gonna last, I would put this on. This really blew me away with its staying power and that it didn't feel drying. I gotta say, this one does last better if you put a lip liner on under it. The other one that I love so much this year is the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. It doesn't feather up into your lip lines, neither does this one. I'd say between the two of these, this one does feel slightly more drying than this one, but it's not drying to the point where you're like, oh my God, get this off me. I find it pretty comfortable until like the very, very tail end of the day. And then I'm like, yeah, I guess my lips feel a little bit dry. But I have this in two colors. And actually I just heard that these were released in a new line of nudes. This one is peachy and this one is cheeky and they are beautiful. They last all day, like 10 hours. So if you know you're going somewhere and you don't wanna be futzing around with your lipstick, definitely give one of these two products a try. My favorite lip liner that I used this year was the NYX Retractable Professional Lip Liner in Nude. I probably use this the most out of any lip liner this year. My other fave is the Urban Decay 24-7 Lip Liner, also in Nude. Those are both awesome. I tried some new blushes this year that I really love. Probably the one that I use the most this year and love the most is this little guy from ColourPop. I'm not sure if it's this packaging. I love the heart shape, the little matte feel of it. This is their um, pressed powder blush in Let's Dance. This is a gorgeous blush. I'm actually not wearing it today. I'm so surprised, but anyway, it's a really pretty like corally pink color, but it just has the most beautiful 
slight, slight, slight sheen to it. So you don't really need to wear a highlighter with it. It will give you that extra glow to your skin. I think I didn't wear it today because it's a little too corally to go with like this top. So I went with more of the pinky blush that I'm gonna show you next, but this was a fave of this year. I usually put it on with my A507 blush brush. This works so beautifully with powder blush. It also works with cream blushes. So it is a multitasker. You can use it for your highlighter. You can use it to blend out your bronzer. And then the runner up to that is this Dior blush. This is the Backstage Rosy Glow in pink. And I was <laughs> kind of shocked at the color of this when I first saw it. And I was like, yikes, that is going to be bubble gummy. But look at it. It doesn't come off bubble gummy on your skin. It is just so beautiful. And it does have a little bit of a sheen to it. Again, not glittery, just a gorgeous, gorgeous, subtle blush. Spendy, but fantastic. And then for the cream blush that I discovered this year that I really loved a lot was from Tower 28. This is their Beach Please blush in Magic Hour. It's a cream blush, so you just dip your finger into it, dot it around your face. Let's see if I have any room for it here on my swatches. It's such a pretty color and it just blends out so beautifully. It gives you this soft, subtle, gorgeous glow. Definitely has that look of Magic Hour, so I love that one. Okay, for bronzer this year, I've got two new products that I discovered to show you. One is this Physician's Formula Maru Maru Butter Glow Face Palette. I like this whole palette, but I gotta say the bronzer is the thing in here that I used the most. The highlighter fell out and broke. So I only have the blush and the bronzer to show you, but this was probably my most used bronzer for the entire year. I love the shade of this. It's not too dark and it's not too warm and it's not too cool because sometimes if your bronzer is too cool, it just looks kind of gray and muddy. If it's too dark, it just, you know, looks artificial on your face. And this was like the perfect color for me. It's a matte bronzer, so it didn't add any like sheen. But I use it more as like a contour. The blush in here is really gorgeous as well. It's a really pretty subtle peach color. Then the higher end bronzer that I just discovered towards the end of the year, but oh my gosh, do I love this so, so much. I'm like, where have you been all my life? This is the Merit Bronzer Balm and the shade I got it in is clay. Inside what you get is this gorgeous bronzer in this chubby stick. And I love the chubby stick. I love the color of this. This is the shade on the bronzer. Again, it's not gonna be too dark for me and look too artificial. It's not too cool so that it won't look muddy. I usually use my BK Beauty 106 brush to blend that in. It blends so easily and so beautifully. Look at that. This gives me so much more control than the products that I was using before. This contour has really been a game changer since I discovered it only a few weeks ago, but I absolutely love it. I don't have a new primer to recommend to you guys. I did try a few this year, but now that I'm using the you know foundations and things that I'm using, they don't really need a primer. I haven't really found any primers that really work that well, so not really recommending any new primers this year. I also don't have a new highlighter to show you this year. I tried a few, didn't enjoy them. I would say the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter is hands down my drugstore favorite highlighter of all time. A great one to try if you're looking for a very subtle highlight. I have it on today. It just makes your cheeks pop a little bit without looking icy or like an obvious highlight. The other one that I love so much is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. This is the mini. It is so beautiful on the skin. Then another favorite that I don't have a new one for you this year, but always the best is the setting spray from Charlotte Tilbury. It's their airbrush flawless setting spray. One product that I always recommend for more mature women, if you're going to use eyeshadow is to definitely use an eyelid primer. This will help your eyeshadow stay in place better. It'll help you blend it out better. It'll help it to not settle in your creases. I did find a new one this year that I love, but I think this has been discontinued already. Such a bummer. It's the Sephora amplifier primer, and this is a dupe for the Fenty Pro Filter amplifying primer. So if this one is discontinued, I'll link this one instead because this one is also great. The other eyelid primer that I used so much in 2022 was the Hourglass Veil Lid Primer. This one is beautiful, really easy to apply. You just pat it on with your fingertips and it looks great. All right, and the last product to talk about today are the brow products. And I know so many mature women will not leave the house without their eyebrows on. And of course, it is so difficult, especially if you're losing your brow hair. And so the product that I recommend if you have sparse brow hairs 
colors and you need to kind of fill in your brows by drawing on your skin is the NYX Fill and Fluff. What I like about this one is the shape of the pencil. It's not a pointy pencil, it's kind of tear shaped. So you can use it on the wide side to do like the wider part of your brow. And then you can turn it the other way to do like the narrower part of your brow. And this is really, really pretty, really, really natural looking. What I love most about it is the other end, which has this really cool little paddle brush. It pushes the product onto your skin and blends it onto your skin. And I think that really helps when you're drawing on your eyebrows because you don't want them to look harsh and drawn on, right? You want them to look fairly natural. The other brow product that I discovered this year and really like a lot, it's the one that I'm wearing today, is the Huda Beauty Bomb Brows Full and Fluffy. This is a brow mascara that has fibers in it and you deposit the fibers onto your brows. So if you still have some brow hairs but they're a little bit sparse, this can help to beef them up by depositing the fibers onto your brow. It really gives the brow a lot of hold without making your brows feel chunky or hard, but it makes them look so fluffy and nice. I just love this product. So I think that that is everything that I had to show you in today's best of 2022 video. I know it was a long one. So if you're here till the end, thank you so much for watching the whole thing. And I hope if you were looking for any new makeup recommendations that you will give these a try. So if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody, bye-bye.